Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Auntie Tay. If you guys are new here, that's who I am. And if you're not, welcome back. And you are watching a new series called Extreme Takeover Room Edition. And Michael from Mr. Crafty Pants' YouTube channel and MrCraftyPants.com is using his Cricut to make over his bathroom using all different types of vinyl from Shop Auntie Tay. Dot com. I am so excited. Make sure to check out his channel and leave a comment telling him how much you love him so that if we want to have him back on my channel, we know that you guys love him, which I already know you're going to love him so much. So take it away. Hey, I'm Michael with the Mr. Crafty Pants YouTube channel and MrCraftyPants.com where I show you how to quickly and easily start mastering your Cricut cutting machine. And this is episode three of Extreme Takeover Room Edition, a brand new five episode series where I am taking over Auntie Tay's channel and transforming this boring, ugly, and depressing bathroom with the help of my Cricut into a space that is fun, cool, and trendy while keeping it budget and renter friendly. So if you missed the first two episodes of this series, I will leave those linked down in the description box below because you don't wanna miss them. In each episode, I'll be transforming a different area of this bathroom using a different type of vinyl. So for episode one, we used Orcal 651 permanent vinyl. Episode two, we used HTV, also known as heat transfer vinyl or iron on vinyl. And right now for episode three, I am showing you how I'll be using printable vinyl and printable HTV or heat transfer vinyl to make over a space in this room. Now, in my opinion, printable vinyl and printable HTV is a total game changer for so many people. I mean, let's be real. There are so many images that would look stunning as decals, but if you tried to make them with traditional vinyl or traditional HTV, there would literally be so many layers that it'd be next to impossible to do. Not to mention extremely frustrating and extremely time consuming. So the great thing about printable vinyl or printable HTV is that you can get multiple colors without the hassle of multiple layers. So for today's projects, I'm gonna be making some art, an inspirational block, as well as show you a really, really awesome secret hack on how to use it to create some labels. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. So if you are new around here, do not hesitate to go ahead and stamp that subscribe button to subscribe to Auntie Tay's channel and ring that bell for all the notifications so that you don't miss a single episode in this series. And hey, while you're at it, if you'd like to see even more extreme Cricut makeovers, then you'll definitely want to head over to my channel and stamp that subscribe button as well. You can find it just by simply searching for Mr. Crafty Pants Cricut Tutorials or by clicking that link that is down in the description box below. And now, without further ado, let's get crafty. So today we are getting started with regular printable vinyl, but with a layer of laminate vinyl to go over top of it to act as a protective barrier. Now I will be showing you all two different uses for printable vinyl. The second one you all do not want to miss. I promise you that it's so cool. And I'll also be doing the same for printable HTV, AKA heat transfer vinyl or iron on vinyl, but we'll get to that later on in today's video. So be sure to stay tuned. Now I absolutely love Ray Dunn, but I've had this little block laying around the house for some time now, and I haven't really put it to much good use. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a new purpose as of today. So it looks like the dimensions for this is right at four inches by four inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into Cricut Design Space in the form of a template. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is come over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on shapes, and I am gonna open up a square. Perfect. So now I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas, right here where it says size. And I'm gonna change that measurement from 3.111 over to four by just hitting four and then hitting enter. There we go. Now, obviously our square right here is not the same color as our block right here, nor does it need to be. I just find things to be a little bit easier to understand when things correlate like that. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do is come up here towards the top left-hand corner of the screen and click on this little color swatch right here. And then I'm gonna come down here and select white. All right, so now we need a design to put onto the square. So I'm gonna come over here to auntietay.com 
And this is where we're gonna get the files to print then cut for our printable vinyl today. So I'm gonna come over here and click on SVGs and cut files. I'm gonna scroll right down here and click on fonts. And then I wanna come over here towards the right hand side of the page and click on this image right above where it says installed fonts. There we go. So now I'm gonna scroll down here until I see the font that we're looking for. And here we go. I'm wanting to use this impact label font right here. So I'm just gonna select that. And just by looking at this font, you'll already be able to tell this would be an absolute nightmare to just cut out and to weed out to get the same effect. So today we're gonna to print it, then cut it instead. I'm gonna come up here towards the top right hand corner of this page and click this little download icon. And once you do that, you'll see this little drop down menu and I'm gonna select direct download. Now, depending on what computer you have or what browser you're using, things are gonna look a little bit differently, right? But as for my setup right here, you'll see right here at the bottom left-hand corner of the page is where this font downloaded. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna come right over here and select install font. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back over here to auntietay.com and this time what I'm wanting to do is come up here towards the top menu and select planner club. Here we go. And I'm gonna select all stickers right here. Perfect, so now I'm gonna select this Aztec Simple Planner option right here. And I'm gonna select this file right here. Perfect, okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna come up here towards the top right hand corner, select this little download icon, select a direct download, and there we go. So now I'm gonna come back up here to Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna come over here to the left hand side of the page and click on upload because we are gonna go through and upload that sticker that we downloaded from auntietay.com. Now, if you are not a member of her Craft Day Creator SVG membership site, all I can say is that you are totally missing out. It is an insanely good deal. It starts out at only like $8 per month. And with that, you get access to literally thousands of SVG files, not to mention hundreds of fonts as well. It is so, so amazing and I highly, highly recommend it. I personally, I love it. So I'm gonna come over here and select upload image and then I'm gonna select browse. And here is our image right here that we're gonna be uploading. So I'm selecting that and then just clicking on open. And I always, 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 as a rule of thumb, I always pick complex whenever I'm uploading a PNG or like a JPEG file. All right, so that is selected. So now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. So this page is the select and erase page. So on this page, you can basically remove any parts of an image that you don't want to have in your final design. So what I'm gonna do is come up here towards the top right hand corner. I'm gonna zoom out just so I can see everything. Now it is this image right here that I'm wanting to use for our project today. So obviously I don't need any of these other images. So to remedy that, what I'm gonna do is come over here towards the top left hand corner. I'm gonna select this crop option right here and I'm just simply gonna click and drag over this file or over this image rather. And there we go. Just as simple as that, all the other images are gone and we are left with just the file that we are wanting or just the image that we're wanting to use. So I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. And on this page, it's asking us if we wanna save this as a print then cut image or as a cut image. Now obviously, since we are using printable vinyl, we want to save this as a print then cut image. It's really allowing us to get so much more detail quickly and easily into our final design without having to worry about cutting multiple sheets of vinyl and then layering those. So this is really a quick fix solution. So I am just making sure that this option right here is selected. And again, you can tell it's selected by this green box around this. Now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select save. There we go. So now I'm gonna come over here and select it and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select insert images. There we go, here is our image. All right, so what I wanna go ahead and do is just grab this little resize handle right here at the bottom right hand corner of our image. And I just wanna drag it out to the side to make our image larger. Now I'm gonna right click our image and then come down here and select send to back. Now I can place our white square right over top of this. There we go. And now all I wanna do is click and drag over this white square and over our design and then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select slice. Now the slice option really acts kind of like a cookie cutter of sorts. So as you'll see right here, I can move off our white square and I can also move off this new square right here 
that has our design in it in the exact dimensions that we're gonna need for our, our little block right here. So now all of this right here is garbage. I can click and drag over all of this and then just click delete. And we're left right here with what our image is supposed to look like. But I do wanna add one more thing to this. I wanna come over here to the left hand side of the page and click text. And I wanna type in here dream without limits. There we go. But I wanna change this font. And to do that, I'm gonna come up here towards the top left hand corner where it says font. I'm gonna come over here to where it says system. And I'm just gonna search for impact and select this font right here. All right, so as you can see, these lines are kind of overlapping a little bit. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is come up here towards the top of the canvas, right here where it says line space. And I'm gonna click this little up arrow, just like so. And as you can see, as I do that, these lines are separating little by little. There we go. Now, I think I wanna change the alignment of this as well. And to do that, I'm gonna come right over here and select alignment and then select center. And I just wanna click that and drag that right over here on top of our design, just like so. You can also go ahead and resize it if you'd like to whatever you want it to be. There we go. I think something like that looks really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag over the background and over our text. And I am gonna come right up here towards the top of the canvas, select align, and then I'm gonna select center. All right, so now what I need to do is come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select flatten. What that does is actually flattens our text with our image and turns it into a printed and cut image as just one solid sheet. So now all we need to do is come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. Now this printable vinyl is absolutely amazing. I love this stuff. It's thick, it feels luxurious, it feels nice. It has a really nice weight to it. And it's just all around a really, really good quality. Now you can get this at shopantitay.com. I do highly, highly recommend it. And if you decide to get some for yourself, you can use my code CRAFTY and that'll save you 10% off on your entire order. But one thing about this printable vinyl is that the front and the back look exactly the same. The way to figure out which is the front from the back is just kind of picking at a corner until you can get the vinyl to lift up, just like so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. And I'm gonna select send to printer. Now I do always like to make sure that this add bleed option is turned on, but I also like to select the use system dialog option, just like that, right before I click print. And what that does is actually brings up additional options for you to select before it actually goes to print. So right here, I am gonna select layout and I'm gonna select paper type and quality. Now, as far as quality, obviously I wanna change that to best. And for paper type, I'm gonna change that to thick plain paper. And now I'm just gonna click on print. So now I'm just gonna apply this to my cutting mat and we'll get started cutting. Now before I apply this to my mat, I am gonna go ahead and just trim off the excess paper. And I'm actually gonna use this for our next project. Now if you are new to doing print thin cut images, you want to make sure to keep this black square that's around your image intact. That is called a registration mark and it allows your Cricut cutting machine to actually read the image and to know exactly where to cut. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this out onto our mat. I'm gonna change the cut settings to vinyl. And then for pressure, I'm gonna select more. And now I'm just gonna load it into the Cricut cutting machine. And there we go. So to remove our printable vinyl from our cutting mat, what I like to do is actually flip the mat over and peel the mat away from the vinyl instead of the other way around. That just helps prevent any damage from occurring to your vinyl. Okay, so as far as our surface right here, what I'm wanting to do before we try to apply our vinyl is actually just wipe it down with some isopropyl alcohol. That's gonna remove any kind of residue, grime, oil, dirt from it and allow the vinyl to go on so much smoother. Now to weed out our printable vinyl, I'm just gonna kind of peel back the sides a little bit and then really just peel off our design just like you would a sticker. Just like that. 
All right, so here is our block, but I do wanna do one more thing to it before we call it quits. I wanna come back over here to the canvas and I'm gonna open up a new shape in a square again. <laughs> and I do wanna change the size of that to four inches, just like that. Now, as far as this design right here, I can come over here to the right-hand side of the page, click this little eye icon to hide it because we don't need it this go around. And now I just wanna come up here towards the top right-hand corner and select to make it. So this go around, we're actually cutting out a laminating film that we're going to apply over top of that block as a protective barrier. Now this is from the same makers as Aura Cal 651, but this line is actually called Aura Guard. Now you can also get this at shopantitay.com. And you're also able to use the code CRAFTY to save 10% off on your entire order. Now, as far as the material goes, I'm gonna come back up here towards the top of the canvas and select Browse All Materials. Now, if you are doing this on a Cricut Explorer Air 2, you can just simply turn the dial over to Custom and this option should populate. Now, for materials, I am just gonna search for clear printable sticker paper. Here we go, right here. And I'm gonna change the pressure to less. A few moments later. All right, so there we go. Here is our laminating film that we just cut out. So now I'm just gonna apply it right over top of this block, just like we would if we were layering vinyl. Now, before we get into this next project, I feel like I need to preface it just a little bit. Earlier this year, Cricut released their brand spanking new Cricut cutting machine, the Cricut Joy, which is right there. <laughs> now, one of the things that people were most excited to make with the Cricut Joy, other than cards, was labels. You see, one of the new materials that launched alongside of the Cricut Joy was Cricut Smart Label, which was a writable vinyl that you could turn into labels. All in all, it's a cool concept and people absolutely loved it, including myself, but I got to wondering, why can't you do the same thing with printable vinyl? I mean, think about it. If printable vinyl is designed to accept and to hold on to ink placed on it by a printer, well, why wouldn't it do the same thing with ink from a pen that was placed there by a Cricut cutting machine? So I decided to test it out and let's just say, I love the results. <laughs> so that is exactly what I'm gonna show you all how to make right now. Now you may be wondering what we're labeling and the answer is this cute little jar right here that I picked up at the Dollar Tree of all places. It even has this really cute little indention right here that is the perfect space for a label. So what I'm gonna do right now is just measure that out. We're gonna to try to recreate a template of that in Cricut Design Space and we'll go from there. Now, as far as the height of this little indention right here, it looks like the measurement is right at three quarters of an inch. And as far as the width, we're looking at right at three inches. So I am just gonna type that into Cricut Design Space and see what we get. All right, so first what I'm gonna do is come over here to shapes. And I think that the closest thing that we can get to the shape that we're going for is probably with this octagon right here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is come up here towards the top of the canvas, right here where it says size. And I'm gonna unlock that padlock that is locking in the proportions of that shape. With that being unlocked, we can now have a different height versus width. So I'm gonna change that width to three inches and then come over here to the right and change that height to 0.75 for three quarters of an inch. All right, so there we go. We're just gonna have to make that work. So I'm gonna come back up here towards the top of the canvas and lock that padlock back. Now what I'm gonna do is head over to auntietay.com. And once we're on this page, I'm gonna come over here and select SVGs and cut files. I'm gonna scroll down here to fonts and select that. And then I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more and select this image that is right here above where it says installed fonts. Now what I absolutely love about her fonts is that they're also mixed in with dingbats. And for those who may not know, dingbats are more or less a type of a font that is basically masquerading around as an image. But what makes that really, really cool is that you can actually use those fonts or images as cut files in Cricut Design Space. So I'm gonna come down here, just keep on scrolling because she has some really cool dingbats in here that are in the shape of labels. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna use this option right here. So I'm just gonna select that. Then come up here towards the top right hand corner and select this little download icon. 
And once you do that, this little drop down menu will populate and you can just select direct download. And now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom left hand corner of my screen, select that. Obviously, depending upon what browser you're using and what computer you're using, that might be a little bit different, but I am using a Mac and I'm using Chrome as my browser. But on your computer, you may just have to go to the downloads folder to grab it. So here is our font right here that we just downloaded. I'm just gonna go ahead and install it by simply clicking install font. Now, if you are on a Mac, you'll have what's called font book on there. And so what you can do is just simply go through and find the dingbat that you're wanting to use and then simply just copy and paste it. All right, so this right here is what we're wanting to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy it by just hitting Command C. And now it's time to insert our labels. So I'm gonna come over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on text. I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas where it says font. And I'm gonna come over to where it says system, the system tab right here. And we'll search for KG because that was at the beginning of uh, the font that we downloaded. And here we go right here. This is what I'm wanting to use. So now I'm coming down here to this text box and then just hitting Command V. There we go. There is our label right there. Perfect. So now all I need to do is just size this within our little template and we'll be good to go. Now, if you're having a little bit of a hard time seeing all this, what you can do is come down here towards the bottom left hand corner and then just zoom in. And now I'm just trying to position this label inside of our template of sorts. All right, so the height of this template is looking pretty good, but I don't like the width of it. I wanna make sure that that width is wider. So what I'm gonna to do to fix that is just by simply clicking this little padlock button right here. So now that this padlock right here is unlocked, I can then grab this little green resize handle and kind of just drag it outwards to kind of distort or warp the image to fit what we're wanting it to fit. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is come back down here towards the bottom left-hand corner of this image and lock that little padlock back. Perfect. So we don't need this template anymore, so we can go ahead and just select that and then just hide it or delete it out. And now what I want to do is just come over here to the left-hand side of the page, click on text again, but I do wanna change this font to more of a normal style of a font. And so I'm gonna come up here, click Cricut, with this little Cricut tab, and I just wanna type in Cricut Sans. There we go. And now right down here in this text box, I can just type in floss because that is what's gonna go in our little jar. Okay, so here is our text, but what I wanna do is come up here towards the top left-hand corner of the page. And right here where it says line type, I wanna select that little drop-down menu and I wanna select draw. Now, as you can see, it did change the style of our font. It made it more of like a bubble letter style of font, which could be fine if that's what you're wanting to go after. I'm actually wanting to go after a little bit different of a style though. So what I'm gonna do is come over here where it says style. Right here it says regular. I'm gonna click this drop down menu and then I'm gonna select writing, just like so. And this is the font that we're wanting to go after or the style of font that we were wanting to go after. So all I'm doing right now is just grabbing this little resize handle right here at the bottom right hand corner of the text and then just dragging that inwards to shrink that text down. We just want that to fit nicely inside of our little label right here. There we go. So what I wanna do is click and drag over this label and over the text, and then come up here towards the top of the canvas where it says align. And then I just wanna scroll down here and select center. And that just perfectly centered our text with our label. So now all I wanna do is come down here towards the bottom right hand corner while both of these elements are still selected and I wanna select attach. And basically what that does is sends a command to our Cricut cutting machine that we wanted to write out the word floss, but then we also wanted to cut this label shape out around the word floss. All right, so all we wanna do now is come up here towards the top right hand corner and select to make it. And then just come down here towards the bottom right hand corner, select continue. For the type of material, I am just gonna select vinyl. And then for pressure, I'm gonna select more. Again, this printable vinyl is pretty thick. It's a really, really nice vinyl. All right, so right here under load tools and material, it'll show you that we need to load our pen into clamp A and make sure that our fine point blade is in clamp B, which it already is. So all we need to do is get out our pen and get that ready. Whenever you're putting your Cricut pen into clamp A, it's not enough just to set the pen inside of there. You literally have to push until it clicks. Just like that. And then close the clamp to clamp A. All right, so this is one of our scraps from earlier of printable vinyl. 
I'm just gonna place that right up here in the top left hand corner of our cutting mat. And then go ahead and load our cutting mat into our machine. All right, so now I'm coming back over here to the canvas and what I'm wanting to do is duplicate this design just like so. But on this design, I wanna come over here to the right hand side of the page and I wanna hide the font. And as far as our other design right here, I can come over here to the right hand side of the page and hide that as well. And what I'm wanting to do is to cut out the shape of this label onto our laminating vinyl. So that way we can layer that on top of our label or our real life label to add a protective barrier to it. So what I wanna do now is just come up here towards the top right hand corner, select make it. And as far as our material goes, I'm gonna come right up here, select browse all materials. Now, as far as what we're gonna search for, I'm gonna just type in here clear, hit enter, and I'm gonna select this clear printable sticker paper and I click done. And I wanna change the pressure to less. All right, so here is our laminating vinyl. And I'm just gonna layer that right on top of our label. And now I'm just gonna apply this like a sticker to our jar. There we go. How cute is that? But one more thing before we're all done with it, I'm gonna paint this lid black. All right, so we just finished up with our printable vinyl. So now we're gonna move over to printable HTV, which stands for heat transfer vinyl. So for us to get started, we obviously need a design. And so for that, I'm heading over to auntietay.com. And yet again, I am gonna be using the Craft Day Creator membership on her site. So I'm gonna come right over here and click on SVGs and cut files. Now, if you wanted to, you could always flatten an SVG file, print it out, and then cut it out that way. But instead, we are actually gonna use the print and cut images on her site right here. And I am gonna come right over here to the right-hand side of the page and select Floral Bundles. So the reason I'm doing this project this way is partly to show you all how to think outside of the box a little bit. And just because something doesn't seem like it's gonna work at first glance, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't make some tweaks and adjustments to make it work. So for example, this file right here. Now, if you've been following along with this series so far, you'll know that these palm leaves right here will fit perfectly in with our overall theme. But this flower right here with the pinks and the purples, that's not gonna necessarily work. So at first glance, you would think that this image as a whole wouldn't work for our project, but I'm gonna show you how to make some adjustments to it to make it work. So I'm gonna come up here towards the top right hand corner of the page, select this little download icon right here, and then select direct download. I'm now gonna come over here to Cricut Design Space to the canvas. And right over here on the left-hand side of the page, I'm gonna click on this upload icon. And then I'm gonna select upload image, then browse, and select our image right here and then click open. I'm gonna select complex for the image type. Now I'm gonna click on continue down here at the bottom right-hand corner. Now it doesn't appear as if anything's on our screen right now, but the fact of the matter is this image is just extremely large. So the way that I'm gonna actually be able to view this image is by coming up here towards the top right hand corner. And there's this little magnifying glass right here with a little minus sign. And this is the way that you zoom out. So I'm gonna select that a few times and there's our image. Now this page right here is where you can make some major adjustments to your overall image. You could erase a background if you needed to or just a certain part of an image. You could crop things out or just flat out erase certain parts that you don't want in your, in your image. So I'm gonna come right over here towards the top left hand corner of the page and right here is where you'll see the different tabs. This is the select and erase tool, this is the erase tool, and here's the crop tool. So what I'm going to do right now is actually click on this crop tool. Now I'm gonna come over here to where our palm leaves are and I just wanna simply click and drag over one of these palm leaves. So as you'll see right down here towards the bottom left-hand corner, there's some pink here, here, and a little bit of white right here. So the way that I'm actually gonna remove those things is to come back up here towards the top left-hand corner. I'm gonna click on the select and erase tab, and that can come down here, select that white, and it's gone. I can select this pink right over here, this pink right here as well. 
Now, if there are certain parts of this that's just a little bit too hard to see, you can always come up here towards the top right hand corner and zoom in by clicking this little magnifying glass with the plus sign. Just like that. There we go. So I'm going to zoom back out. And overall, it looks pretty good, right? And then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. Now this page is where you select if you want to save your image as a print then cut image to save all the color, all the detail, just like right here. Or if you want to save it as a cut image, which as you can see right over here towards the right, there's no color, no detail on the actual leaf. It would literally just cut out the border of the leaf. But today we are wanting to save this as a print then cut image since we are doing printable vinyl or printable HTV rather. So I'm gonna make sure that this is selected and you can tell that this option is selected by the screen box around the image. Now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner, select save. And all right, so there is our image right there on our canvas. So for today's project, I am gonna be applying that image to a sheet of burlap and then placing that burlap inside of this frame right here that I got at the Bullseyes Playground at Target for just a few dollars, I believe. Now to make it a little bit more cohesive with our overall theme, I'm gonna be painting over this yellow to black and obviously switching out this image with what we're creating today. So what I need to do right now is actually figure out the dimensions of the image inside of this frame. So I'm just simply gonna remove the backing off of this frame. There we go and just measure it really quick so we know how big to make our image. So we're looking at barely under five inches for the height and the same for the width as well. So in Cricut Design Space, I'll just put that in as 4.95 inches, but I'm gonna set those dimensions as a square, not our actual image. And I'm gonna use that square as a template for our frame. So what I wanna do real quick is come over here towards the left-hand side of the page, click on shapes and then click on square. And then right up here towards the top of the canvas, right here towards the center, you'll see where it says size. And I want to change that width to 4.95. Hit enter. And since that little padlock right there is locked, it did lock in those proportions. And so once I changed the width to 4.95, it automatically changed the height to 4.95 as well. So this is now the template for the inside of our frame. Now, just to be a tad more realistic for what we're going for with this, I'm gonna come up here towards the top left-hand corner of this page and change that color by clicking this little color swatch. And since we are applying our image to a sheet of burlap, I'm gonna come right down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select this little brown color right here. Now, mind you, the color of this absolutely has zero effect on our finished project since we are not printing this out as well. We are literally just using this as a template. So I'm gonna right click this and then click send to back. That way our image is in front of it. And now I'm just gonna resize our image to fit on top of this template the way that we want it to be in real life. So I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner of this image, click on this little resize handle and then drag it inwards to shrink this down a little bit. There we go. And up here towards the top right hand corner, I can select this little rotation handle or rotate handle, just like so. I can make this bigger if I wanted to. I think something like that would look great. But obviously we have part of our leaf or part of our image hanging off the edge of our template. Now to fix that, what I'm gonna do is just simply click and drag over our image and over our square. And then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select slice. So now I can actually move our leaf out of the way just like that. And notice that those edges are cut off to fit perfectly inside of that frame. Now all this right over here is garbage basically. So I can just click and drag over that and then just click delete. And all right, so all I need to do now is simply come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. Now, even though this is a type of HTV, for this particular brand of printable HTV, we are not supposed to mirror it. Now that may vary from brand to brand, so always, always read the directions, but for this type specifically, we are not gonna mirror it today. So I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. And now I'm just gonna select send to printer. Now I do wanna make sure that this add bleed option is turned on and what that will do is actually kind of blur out the edges of your image, which may look a little weird at first, but I promise you once your Cricut goes through and cuts out your design, it'll look perfect. I also wanna select use system dialog and then click print. And what that system dialog option does is literally brings up a list of options for you to make additional little tweaks before you print out your image. Now something that is good to know is that depending on what printer you have, this page will look different. 
but more or less, usually most of the options are pretty similar. So for my particular printer, what I'm gonna do is come right over here, select layout, and I'm gonna come right down here and select paper type and quality. Now for the paper type, I am just gonna come over here and select thick plain paper. And for the quality, I am gonna change that to best. And now I'm just gonna click on print. All right, so here is our image on our printable HTV from shopantitay.com. Now, if you plan on purchasing any of this, which I do highly recommend, it is a really good quality of printable HTV. You can always use my code, which is crafty, and that will save you an additional 10% off on your entire order. And the link for that will be down in the description box below. But for right now, I am gonna select the type of material that we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna select browse all materials, and I'm gonna come up here and search for printable, hit enter, and I am gonna cut this out with the printable iron on dark option. Then come down here towards the bottom right hand corner, select done. And now I'm gonna put this on our cutting mat and we can get started cutting. And for this, I am using my light blue Cricut light grip mat. There we go. So now we're gonna go ahead and just load it into our cutting machine and get started. So what it's doing right now is just going around and reading this black square that's around our image. That black square is also known as registration mark. And right now it's just reading that registration mark to know exactly where to cut on our image. To remove our printable HTV from our cutting mat, the best way to do this to reduce the risk of damaging our printable HTV is just to simply flip our mat over and peel the mat away from the printable HTV instead of the other way around. And it comes off just like a charm. Now I should have had my easy press heating up while I was doing all that, but honestly, I just forgot, but that's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and get that set now. And I'm gonna set that to 350 degrees for 30 seconds. Now, while that is heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my palm leaf from my paper. But before I do that, I'm actually gonna trim off all of the excess paper right down here that was not used for this particular project because I am gonna use that in our next project. So now I'm gonna remove this palm leaf from the paper. So I'm just gonna pick at the corner until I get a piece of that vinyl to lift up, just like so. And there we go. So now I can go ahead and just peel off my leaf. So now I'm just gonna apply this to our burlap. There we go. Okay, so before we apply our easy press, I'm just grabbing a piece of this parchment paper, applying it over top of our image, and then applying our easy press. I absolutely love how this turned out. And in my own personal opinion, I think it's gonna look even better once it's in that frame after it's been painted black. Okay, so just like earlier in today's episode where we made the labels out of the printable vinyl, what I actually wanna do now is make labels with printable HTV and then apply it to this fabric basket right here. So what I wanna do first is obviously get the dimensions of the area that we want to apply the vinyl or like the label to figure out how big we want to make it. Okay, so I'm thinking about three and a half inches wide by about two inches or so tall. So I'm going to come right back over here to Cricut Design Space and use those same labels that we used earlier. I'm going to duplicate this label right here and I'm going to come right back up here and hide these just by clicking this little eye icon right over here on the right hand side of the page in the layers panel. There we go. So now with this new label, what I wanna do first off is change the dimensions to what we talked about earlier. So I'm gonna make sure that that is selected and then I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas, right here where it says size. I'm gonna unlock that little padlock so that we can change up the proportions. And I'm gonna change that width to 3.5, click enter. And then for that height, I'm gonna change that to two for two inches. Hit enter and there we go. We can go ahead and lock that little padlock back and now I'm gonna come over here to the left hand side of the page and click on text. And I'm gonna type in there hand towels. Now obviously these lines are not centered and the amount of space in between the two lines is a little much. But I wanna wait until I get that font looking exactly the way I want it before I make any adjustments to it. So I'm gonna come up here towards the top left hand corner of the page and I'm gonna change the style of this by clicking this little drop down menu and then selecting writing. There we go. 
And now I want to come over here and change up that line spacing and make it, make it centered as well. So I'm going to select alignment and then click center. And just like that, those two lines are now centered with one another. And now I'm going to come back up here and select line space. I'm going to click on this little down arrow right here. And as you can see, each time I do that, those two lines are getting closer and closer and closer. All right, so I think that that looks pretty good. So I can go ahead and just drag it over top of our label. I'm just gonna click this little resize handle right here at the bottom right hand corner of the text. Drag that inwards. And then just play around with this until it looks the way that I want it to look. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click and drag over both of these elements over the label and over the text. And I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas, select a line, and then I'm gonna select center. And that's gonna center the text and that label horizontally and vertically for us. Now, while those are both still selected, I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select attach. And by selecting attach, what that's doing is actually telling our Cricut cutting machine that we wanted to cut out a piece of HTV in that particular shape. And then just the way we have it right here, we wanted to write on there the words hand towels. So now I just want to come up here towards the top right hand corner of the screen and click on make it. There's nothing we need to do right here. So I can come down here towards the bottom right hand corner and select continue. Now, as far as our material settings goes, I'm going to select this option right here that says browse all materials right here where it says search all materials. I'm just going to type in printable, click enter, and we're looking for printable iron on dark. This option right here. Now coming down here towards the bottom right hand corner and selecting done. And now we just need to get our cutting mat ready. All right, so I already have my printable HTV cut out and weeded out. So now all I really need to do is apply it to our basket. And the way that I'm gonna do that is just by trying to flatten this basket as much as possible without damaging it. you really just wanna make as flat of a surface as possible. And to help with that, I'm grabbing our Cricut Easy Press Mat and I'm gonna fold this up, stick it inside. I'm gonna grab our label and peel it off of its backing paper. And just apply it on top of this basket. Now I'm just grabbing a piece of that parchment paper, the same piece that we used earlier, and applying it over top of our label. Just be sure that whenever you apply it, it doesn't move your label off center or anything. And now I'm just grabbing our Easy Press, applying it over top of our label, being very careful, of course, and then applying that for 30 seconds. Thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. If you liked it or if you learned something new, please be sure that you stamp that like button before you go, as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below. That really, really helps us out. And honestly, I just really look forward to going through and reading all the comments and responding to each of you all individually. If you're new around here to Auntie Tay's channel, be sure that you stamp that subscribe button before you go. And also, if you'd like to see more extreme Cricut makeovers, then be sure to head over to my channel and subscribe there as well. I would love to have you. Just simply search for Mr. Crafty Pants Cricut Tutorials here on YouTube, or click that link down in the description box below. Thank you again for watching today's video. I am so grateful for each and every single one of you all. And until next time, stay crafty.